Back in the year four, there was a competition held by the cave people of Guadalupe, and it was to see who could make the first lens that had a three-dimensional pop. Of course, everybody failed until Carl Zeiss Leichenstein came into the picture, you know what I mean? So today we are reviewing these freak lenses, the Sirius, the gray and orange. Not bad, see if they got the pop. I already reviewed the 24 mil Tony 1.2 on the G9 Mark II and the Blackmagic OG, so go watch that video. Now we're testing the full frame version. They're meant for APS-C, but we have some tricks up our sleeve and we're gonna find the truth. Are these worth your pennies? All I want is the perfect camera. All I want is the perfect camera. So right now we're on the Canon EOS R with the 24 mil 1.4. And we're going to switch over to the 35, which is this one, 35 1.2, and then 55 1.2. And I'm going to answer five viewer questions in this video. So right now we're seeing some 3D pop. You must admit, if I'm in focus, the odds are 3D pop-like. So let's switch to the 35 mil in full frame just to see you what you look like. Oh, boy. Okay, now we're on the 35 mil Tony 1.2 in the full frame version. It's not a full frame lens, but I noticed there was only a slight vignette up here. What do you need up there? And if you punch into the like digital stabe 10% crop, it gets rid of most of it. And then active stabe enhanced gets e rid of even more. Was that your question? Okay, first question here. You know, the most annoying thing about my job is when you focus on something and then you stand next to it and you're somehow not aligned with it. I do it over and over again. So that first clip, just a bunch of crap. We got a bunch of nice stuff coming. I nailed focus on every other shot. Low light test, 1.2. Canon Yasar, 12,800 ISO. Just bare minimum bathroom lights. You know what I mean? You know it. It's pretty good. It's a good lens. Is 10 bit a lie? Every YouTuber, including you, says 10-bit is better, but I filmed two identical clips in 8 and 10-bits and applied heavy color shifts in both. They look identical. Is it worth 10-bit, really? We're scrubs. We know very little of what we have and why we need it. 10-bit, in my opinion, like, usually, if you're going to do a basic side-by-side, -side, apply your log LUT to Rec. 709, you're not going to see much of a difference. It's only, like, super intuitive intellectual color shifted people who are like i see it i see the blue shifts you can see the magenta to the blue transition radiance is not quite as smooth like okay you might see it it's really just for heavy color grading where you're like shifting the shadows to red and you notice it really in the sony s-log 2 of the old or the s-log 3 in 8-bit of their old cameras trying to grade that it's like 10-bit applies more leniency so like if you mess up your white balance a little bit there's more leeway to correct it let's switch into stabilization to see if it gets rid of the crappy corners is my head cut off it better not be i feel like i got to do one of these karate stances just be ready for anything so now we're in the easiest stab mode 10 percent crop it's basically a full frame lens some people add vignettes in post for a pleasant look so 10-bit, I don't know, it's pretty good. I, I feel like I need it, especially if you're going to do a demon LUT. You need, like, I like to play around and turn the sky red and, like, make the trees purple. And I do weird stuff, and I notice it when I put a LUT on, like, things are blocky and weird and 8-bit. Whereas 10-bit, it's magic. Okay, this is why I got the lenses. They said they were APS-C, and I was like, you know what? Canon EOS R with its ridiculous 4K crop. You might have something there. 35 mil 1.2, that's nothing to sneeze at. I wouldn't sneeze, get a napkin. You're talking a lot here. That's a lot of talking. I'm currently thinking of the A6400 or A6700. Really stretch the budget. Would be a lockdown talking headshot, but also B-roll with high speed. Tripod shots, moving. She's ton head. Where will the tonne take her? Okay, you've asked so much. No plans for 4K. Stupid choices forever. Big thanks. Let's move to answer this moron. Okay, now we're full body 4K. Still on the 35 mil 1.2. We'll switch to the 55 in a second. But for this guy who thinks he can upgrade a Sony camera, just know 
that Sony back then had the worst 1080p possible. So like you thinking you're upgrading, you don't even want 4K. So it's like, I don't know that you're gonna get much of an upgrade in the Sony ecosystem. A6700 could be nice for you as a dream. Like it does have 4K 120, HD 240, I'm not gonna lie, that'd be fun, but so does the Fuji XS20. Have you thought of completely switching systems? By the sound of it, you don't have much of anything in the line of lenses lineup. You know what I mean? So come on, are we seeing 3D pop here? These lenses, I'm telling you just as a side rant, fantastic. A lot of companies come out with these super fast primes, but they're not actually usable. Whereas this is like sharp wide open at 1.2, I will try to get in a night shot to see what happens. But so far I'm a lucky. But if it was me, you're spending like a thousand plus dollars. Go for the better one. At least get the Sony a6700. Don't go a6400. That's such a lie. The HD is so bad. It's just like sharp. That's about it. But you get IBIS. I think it has active stabe in the a6700. Or just switch entirely to Fuji XS20. I think I still probably lean A6700, but Fuji does have the better lenses with 3D pop. There's some, there's some. G9 II, a little pricier, you're up in your game now, but that's another one to consider that would match or destroy both. I moved, I'm in a meadow now. Uh, the rule of thirds slantings. Uh, so we're still on the 35 mil, I'm gonna switch to the 55 very soon to see the compression difference. And then we move on. Not a question here. Do you own more than one camera? Why? Can't you absolutely do everything you want with one camera? A woman put a GoPro on a rocket. Okay, whatever, buddy. So, yeah, absolutely. Like, for the longest time, like, I moved to Thailand with the Panasonic G85 and my little Sony X3000. So, like, it's nice to have both those options, something high quality for indoors or outdoors and then something very light that you can travel with, you don't have to think of nothing. All those visa runs I did, where I had to leave the country and come back, flying somewhere to Laos or to Kuala Lumpur, I only brought my X3000, that's all I needed. And it was totally like easy, and that's what made it fun. Whereas now I live in an apartment, I have a bunch of stuff, I'm stationary and I'm here most of the time. Do I need more gear for that? Like, of course not. One camera is all you ever need. And sometimes I wish I try to like get down to that, but it's also fun to have different options. Like I love having a Canon color science camera just to have it and see, okay. And then I go on my Sony, it's like, oh, green face, uh, but sharper, better slow-mo. So it's nice to have options. And sometimes a company like Siriu will reach out to me with lenses and it's like, oh, okay, I'll take two for the RF mount and then one for Micro Four Thirds. I got the Black Magic. It's nice to have options. Do you need it though? Whenever I hear someone saying, oh, I'm looking for a B cam. It's like, for what? A worse camera than the one you already have? For what reason? Just film your stuff on your nicest thing. Whenever I'm going out, it's with my one camera, unless I'm doing a comparison. One camera is all you need. Okay, I want to see what the difference is between the 24mm 1.2 on Micro Four Thirds and these 35 and 55mm on Canon. We're at the closest focusing distance right now, 4K, 24p, Panasonic G9 II with the Siriu 24mm Tony 1.2. Let's switch to the Canon now in 4K with its crop, see who gets closer, who has the more Tony. And now we've switched over to the Canon EOS R with the Siriu 35mm Tony 1.2. 1.2 Tonys on APS-C like fashion. Are you seeing more background blur? Is one sharper? Wow. I mean, these are a set of lenses. I imagine they perform very similarly optically, but probably not. You probably should test it for yourself. All right, now we're on the Siriu 55mm Tony 1.2 on the Canon EOS R. Looks nice and shiny. Harder to see the peaking. Blurrier background. Oh my god, right now. Micro Four Thirds, you lose. Okay, we're on the 55 now. I didn't move the camera because I wanted to see roughly how much different that is. And then I am going to move it back to try to get the same shot as the last guy. But like, you don't need a B cam. And there's something that comes with simplicity where you only have one thing to worry about. One Sony a7S III, 
you know your batteries are all the same, you got one charger, your life is simplified, versus variety and just tasting various different dishes of Canon Fuji salads. My channel was based on simplicity for the longest time. I just, my G85 and the Sony X3000, and it wasn't until I left Thailand, I started getting a bunch of offers. Like, here, man, do you want this Leica lens? Boom. And then Marcus Pix was like, you want to pick any camera you want. He sent me the Panasonic GH5S and the Leica 12 1.4. So like I had that now in two cameras, and then I ended up giving away the G85 and then Flatter Santa sent us like the G9 and then X-T4 and Sony a7 III and like I became a camera king in a castle and I had too much and I gave some away, I sold some and I tried to simplify but I don't know man, I don't know the answers. You have to ask yourself. I think you can get by with one. If, I, if my house was on fire right now, I would grab my Sony a7S III and whatever Zeiss lenses I could find and maybe that 200 to 600 and I'd run for my life and then call to make sure my girlfriend got out. Are you fine, hon? Do you need me to come back up? Grab the Canon EOS R while you're at it, that 24. You know what I mean? So like, really all I need is a Sony a7S III and I'm done. And then it would be nice to have a little action cam. GoPro 12, I think, would be the answer. DJI has some issues. GoPro 11's good, but now we got log. You know what I mean? two cameras and we're done. Okay, now we're way back there. I can't even see the screen. 55 mil 1.2, my goodness. There's probably a lot of headroom and side room. Whatever, man. The compression is real and it is fun to do. Okay, next guy. I have a A6000, some APS-C lenses from Sigma. Oh, that is gross. Do you think I should upgrade to the A67 or go full frame with the A7R3? I do mainly photos but want to do more video stuff. I'm going to pretend I didn't hear that. Do you think the 200 to 600 or Sigma 100 to 400 is the better choice? Do you not watch any of the content that I put out? Sigma glass on the telephoto end does not sync stave with Sony bodies. So it's going to be shaky as hell for video, which you're likely doing mostly from now on. So like, it's never the option. I understand if you want to get like, oh, a Sigma 35 1.4, it's super sharp, zero 3D pop, but whatever, okay. I'd go with a Siriu myself. No autofocus, but do you need it? I don't think you do. You might. I think I wrote notes for you. I pitied you. A6700, even though it's APS-C, would do better video. And doesn't it have... No, it doesn't. The A7C2 has higher megapixels, 33? That's not bad for photographies. You could do it. And then your full frame, it's not cheap, but it's not bad. Okay, we're in full frame mode again on the 55 now to see if there's any vignettes. There is a river down there. Are you seeing it in the corners? You might see some. We have one last question. We're, we're rounding it on up here. For wildlife video, Sony A6700 is my head cut off. That will suck. For wildlife video, Sony A67 with 70 to 350 or Fuji X-T4 with 70 to 300. I'm going lightweight because of how much hiking is required. You know, when I was using the Fuji X-S20 and I was debating like, you know what? I think the X-T4 would be better just because there were so many more custom buttons. Things were easier to switch, but I don't know. The X-S20 is actually quite a bit better. It has the better autofocus animal eye detect in any frame rate. They're both doing the same 4K60 with the same crop, HD240 with the same crop. It's pretty painful, but like both could be do, like why aren't you getting the XS20? It's like mostly better, come on. I've never tried that 70 to 350 Sony lens. That might be a thing. Let's crop in more. All right, we got the first level of stabilization on. I panned up, but I feel like I went way too high. Oh, I suck at this. But yeah, those would be your two basic tiny setups. I mean, you could say Panasonic G9 II with the 100 to 300 even. Wow. But if you're set on Sony or Fuji, I think Sony will have much better specs. 4K 120p. But a huge crop. Oh, there's two dragon fricks and a cricket. Ah. Ah. 
So like you couldn't go wrong with either one of those. I would probably, I hate to say it, but I would probably choose Sony. I think they have animal eye detect in video, 4K 120p, even though it's a huge crop. That lens though, that's the deal breaker. I've heard good things, it's sharp, but much lighter than the 200 to 600, that must be nice. 4K anyone? I think what you have to ask yourself is, can you expand with a certain, it was a twig. Oh man, <laughs> I thought I was being bitten by a cobra. Like if you get the Sony a6700 with the 70 to 350, do you think you'll also be doing talking head stuff or filming street videography one day and you wanna expand? I feel like Sony has the better ecosystem. It's just so much more reliable. I don't remember what I focused on. I think it was that area. So I don't know, for me, I love Sony, but like Fuji has that special touch. It's magical. Canon looks better than Fuji. So like for me, it's Sony and Canon and also Black Magic is a third party freak. And then the little action cams wasn't your question. So let me know what you think of these lenses. I think they're hot damn good for 350 American plus my discount code. To get a 1.2 that's actually sharp wide open, I mean, it is manual focus only, but it is nice and smooth. I never have problems with Canon peaking unless I forget which branch I focused on. They're hot damn good. I will likely keep most of them, I think. That's my new black magic cam lens and possibly one of these. Which one do I need? Do I need both 35 and 55? I doubt it. But one of them, for sure. Why wouldn't you? So I'm going to leave that way. Subscribe for more videos, and I'll see you in the next one. Is there 3D pop? There could be. There could be. I think there is, actually, now that I came around this way so fast. How could you come that fast without 3D pop?